And let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, you who have given us this good land and its founding truth for our American heritage, we ask your presence as we gather to recognize a man who has gone above and beyond the call of duty in defense of that heritage. In your providence, Sergeant First Class Leroy Petrie, valor and sacrifice saved the lives of his men and fellow rangers on that trying day in Afghanistan. By your grace, we know that he continues to live today according to those same values. Out of such heroes, you have woven the tapestry of this great nation. Pray that you may enable each of us as Americans to likewise live lives of valor and sacrifice every day as you continue weaving the tapestry of America. We celebrate with Sergeant First Class Petrie's wife, mother, father, grandparents, his brothers, and his children. Also remember his grandfather, Leo, celebrates with us today in a very special way. We are grateful for all the people and events you have used to mold this man who stands before us this day. We are grateful, too, for the Rangers, our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen, given their lives in this long conflict. Give your grace and strength to their families and friends as they live with the loss of their loved ones and comrades. And now may your presence be with us in this hour. May your guiding grace be upon our national leadership. We add to all in our military, especially those who serve today in harm's way, the strength and the wisdom that come only from you. You be honored in every endeavor to which you call America and her citizens. And finally, may your favor be upon Sergeant First Class Petrie and his family. President Calvin Coolidge once wrote, a nation that forgets its defenders itself will be forgotten. Grant that we as a nation hold him and those like him who have given so much in our common defense unforgotten. This we come before you, and we pray in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Rutherford. Uh, please be seated. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the White House as we present our nation's highest military decoration, the Medal of Honor, to an extraordinary American soldier, Sergeant First Class Leroy Petrie. This is a historic occasion. Uh, last fall, I was privileged to present the Medal of Honor to Staff Sergeant Salvatore uh, Junta for his heroism in Afghanistan. And Sal joins us this afternoon. Where's Sal? Good to see you. So today is the, only the second time during the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, indeed only the second time since Vietnam, that a recipient of the Medal of Honor from an ongoing conflict has been able to accept this medal in person. And having just spent some time with Leroy, uh, his lovely wife Ashley, their wonderful children in the Oval Office, and then had a chance to see uh, the entire uh, Petrie family here, I have to say, uh, this could not be happening to a nicer guy uh, or a more inspiring family. Uh, Leroy, the Medal of Honor reflects the deepest gratitude of our entire nation. So we're joined by members of Congress, Vice President Biden, leaders from across my administration, uh, including Deputy Secretary of Defense Bill Lynn, and leaders from across our armed forces, including uh, the Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Jim Haas Cartwright, uh, Army Secretary uh, John McHugh, and Army Chief of Staff General Marty Dempsey. We're honored to welcome more than 100 of Leroy's family and friends, uh, many from his home state of New Mexico, as well as his fellow Rangers from the legendary Delta Company 2nd Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment. And as always, uh, we are humbled by the presence of members of the Medal of Honor Society. Today, we honor a singular act of gallantry. Yet as we near the 10th anniversary of the attacks that thrust our nation into war, this is also an occasion to pay tribute to a soldier and a generation that has borne the burden of our security during a hard decade of sacrifice. 
I want to take you back to the circumstances that led to this day. Uh, it's May 26, 2008, in the remote east of Afghanistan, near the mountainous border of Pakistan. Helicopters carrying dozens of elite Army Rangers race over the rugged landscape. And their target is an insurgent compound. The mission is high risk. It's broad daylight. The insurgents are heavily armed. But it's considered a risk worth taking because intelligence indicates that a top Al-Qaeda commander is in that compound. Soon, the helicopters touch down, and our Rangers immediately come under fire. Within minutes, Leroy, then a staff sergeant, and another soldier are pushing ahead into a courtyard surrounded by high mud walls. And that's when the enemy opens up with their AK-47s. Leroy is hit in both legs. He's bleeding badly, but he summons the strength to lead the other ranger to cover behind a chicken coop. He radios for support. He hurls a grenade at the enemy, giving cover to a third ranger who rushes to their aid. An enemy grenade explodes nearby, wounding Leroy's two comrades. And then a second grenade lands, this time only a few feet away. Now, every human impulse would tell someone to turn away. Every soldier is trained to seek cover. That's what Sergeant Leroy Petrie could have done. Instead, this wounded ranger, this 28-year-old man with his whole life ahead of him, this husband and father of four, did something extraordinary. He lunged forward toward the live grenade. He picked it up. He cocked his arm to throw it back. Now, what compels such courage? What leads a person to risk everything so that others might live? Now, for answers, uh, we don't need to look far. The, the roots of Leroy's valor are all around us. We see it in the sense of duty instilled by his family, who joins us today, uh, his father, Larry, his mother, uh, Lorella, and his four brothers. Growing up, the walls of their home were hung with pictures of grandfathers and uncles in uniform, leading a young Leroy to believe, that's my calling too. We see it in the compassion of a high school student who overcame his own struggles to mentor younger kids to give them a chance. We see it in the loyalty of an Army Ranger who lives by a creed, never shall I fail my comrades. Or as Leroy puts it, these are my brothers, family, just like my wife and kids. And you protect the ones you love. And that's what he did that day when he picked up that grenade and threw it back just as it exploded. With that selfless act, Leroy saved his two Ranger brothers, and they are with us today. This valor came with a price. The force of the blast took Leroy's right hand. Shrapnel riddled his body. Said one of his teammates, I had never seen someone hurt so bad. So even his fellow rangers were amazed at what Leroy did next. Despite his grievous wounds, he remained calm. He actually put on his own tourniquet. And he continued to lead, directing his team, giving orders, even telling the medics how to treat his wounds. When the fight was won, as he lay in a stretcher being loaded onto a helicopter, one of his teammates came up to shake the hand that Leroy had left. That was the first time I shook the hand of someone who I considered to be a true American hero, that ranger said. Leroy Petrie showed that true heroes still exist and that they're closer than you think. And that ranger is right. Our heroes are all around us. There are the millions of Americans in uniform who have served these past 10 years. Many 
like Leroy, deploying tour after tour, year after year. On the morning of 9-11, Leroy was training to be a ranger, and as his instructor got the terrible news, they told Leroy and his class, keep training, you might be going to war. Within months, Leroy was in Afghanistan for the first of seven deployments since 9-11. Leroy speaks proudly of the progress our troops have made. Afghan community is now free from the terror of the Taliban and Afghan forces that are taking more responsibility for their security. And he carries with him the memories of Americans who have made the ultimate sacrifice to make this progress possible. Earlier in the Oval Office, uh, Leroy gave me the extraordinary privilege of showing me the small plaque that is bolted to his prosthetic arm. On it are the names of the fallen rangers from the 75th Regiment. They are quite literally part of him, just as they will always be part of America. Now, one of those names is of the ranger who did not come back from the raid that day, Specialist Christopher Gaithercole. Now, Christopher's brother and sister uh, and grandmother are here with us today. Uh, I would ask that they stand briefly so that we can show our gratitude for their family's profound sacrifice. Our heroes are all around us. They're the force behind the force. Uh, military spouses like Ashley, who during Leroy's many deployments, uh, during missed birthdays and holidays, has kept this family army strong. So we're grateful to you, Ashley, and for all the military spouses who are here. Their military children, like Brittany and Austin, and Reagan and seven-year-old Landon, uh, who at the end of a long day is there to gently rub his dad's injured arm. And so I want to make sure that we acknowledge these extraordinary children as well. Our heroes are all around us. There are men and women in uniform who, through a decade of war, have earned their place among the greatest of generations. Now, during World War II, on D-Day, it was the Rangers of D Company who famously scaled the cliffs of Pont du Hoc. After 9-11, we learned again, Rangers lead the way. They were some of the first boots on the ground in Afghanistan. They have been deployed continuously ever since. Today we can see our progress in this war and our success against Al-Qaeda, and we're beginning to bring our troops home from Afghanistan this summer. Understand there will be more fighting and more sacrifices in the months and years to come. But I am confident that because of the service of men and women like Leroy, we will be able to say of this generation, what President Reagan once said of those rangers who took the cliffs on D-Day. These are the heroes who helped end a war. I would ask all of our rangers, members of the 9-11 generation, to stand and accept the thanks of a grateful nation. Finally, the service of Leroy Petrie 
speaks to the very essence of America. That spirit that says no matter how hard the journey, no matter how steep the climb, we don't quit. We don't give up. Leroy lost a hand, and those wounds in his legs sometimes make it hard for him to stand. But he pushes on and even joined his fellow rangers for a grueling 20-mile march. He could have focused only on his own recovery, but today he helps care for other wounded warriors, inspiring them with his example. Given his wounds, he could have retired from the Army with honor, but he chose to reenlist indefinitely. And this past year, he returned to Afghanistan, his eighth deployment, back with his Ranger brothers on another mission to keep our country safe. This is the stuff of which heroes are made. This is the strength, the devotion that makes our troops the pride of every American. And this is the reason that, like a soldier named Leroy Petrie, America doesn't simply endure. We emerge from our trials stronger, more confident, with our eyes fixed on the future. Our heroes are all around us. And as we prepare for the reading of the citation, please join me in saluting one of those heroes, Leroy Petrie. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, March 3, 1863, has awarded in the name of Congress the Medal of Honor to Staff Sergeant Leroy A. Petrie, United States Army. Staff Sergeant Leroy A. Petrie distinguished himself by acts of gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty in action with an armed enemy in the vicinity of Paktia Province, Afghanistan, on May 26, 2008. As a weapons squad leader with Delta Company, 2nd Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment, Staff Sergeant Petrie moved to clear the courtyard of a house that potentially contained high-value combatants. While crossing the courtyard, Staff Sergeant Petrie and another Ranger were engaged and wounded by automatic weapons fire from enemy fighters. Still under enemy fire and wounded in both legs, Staff Sergeant Petrie led the other Ranger to cover. He then reported the situation and engaged the enemy with a hand grenade, providing suppression as another ranger moved to his position. The enemy quickly responded by maneuvering closer and throwing grenades. The first grenade explosion knocked his two fellow rangers to the ground and wounded both with shrapnel. A second grenade then landed only a few feet away from them. Instantly realizing the danger, Staff Sergeant Petrie unhesitatingly and with complete disregard for his safety, deliberately and selflessly moved forward, picked up the grenade, and in the effort to clear the immediate threat, threw the grenade away from his fellow rangers. As he was releasing the grenade, it detonated, amputating his right hand at the wrist and further injuring him with multiple shrapnel wounds. Although picking up and throwing the live grenade grievously wounded Staff Sergeant Petrie, his gallant act undeniably saved his fellow rangers from being severely wounded or killed. Despite the severity of his wounds, Staff Sergeant Petrie continued to maintain the presence of mind to place a tourniquet on his right wrist before communicating the situation by radio in order to coordinate support for himself and his fellow wounded rangers. Staff Sergeant Petrie's extraordinary heroism and devotion to duty are in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, 75th Ranger Regiment, and the United States Army.
Let us pray. Lord, be upon us this day. We all live the values and celebrate the commitment to our nation Sergeant First Class Petrie has modeled. Give us strength this day and keep us always in your care. This we pray in your holy name. Amen. Uh, thank you all for attending uh, this extraordinary ceremony for this extraordinary hero. Uh, I hope that all of you will join the family. There's going to be an outstanding reception. Uh, I hear the food is pretty good around here. Uh, and I know the music's great because uh, we've got uh, uh, my own Marine band playing. So uh, thank you so much for your attendance. Uh, and once again, congratulations, Leroy, for your extraordinary devotion to our country. Thank you very much. <laughs>